What's up everybody? It's Sunday, bike day. Exciting day for me. This bike's been sitting like this for about a week and a half now. Today's the day to make some upgrades, changes to the bike. Um, got the doors open today. It's a little chilly outside. Actually, I'm freezing my butt off to be quite honest with you. But, um, you know, need a little more light. So what I did was I ordered a new 18 by 1.85 rim and I got this Dunlop K990 tire, which I mounted on with extreme difficulty. My head, if you've ever had to mount a thick moto tire onto a moto rim, you know that it is not an easy chore to do. I think I used every sailor's word in the book <laughs> putting this thing on, but got it on. There's the old one sitting over there, the old uh, 19 inch by 1.6 rim, I think it is. I thought it was 1.85, turns out I think it's actually 1.6 rim. Um, 1.85 is actually bigger than I thought it was. Um, so that guy, is that's a 3.5 T motor. This new motor is a 5T motor, so I wanted to see what kind of torque differences I would be getting. I do a lot of off-road riding in the woods, um, and initial torque is most important for me. Top speed, not really a big deal for me. I'm not riding on-road too much, mostly in the woods. Um, so this is a heavy combination. We'll see how it works out. Uh, I initially, funny, I got a two QS205 V50H uh, V3 motor 5T, and I just because I had some people say you should try it out, but I realized it did not fit in my dropouts. I got the wide dropout. So sold that, got rid of that, stuck with the 273. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Something else we're gonna be doing today is upgrading the controller. This is my old controller, 72 200 Sabaton. And this is a locked version. I didn't want the locked version. I wanted the unlocked version to uh, see what difference that's it can make, increase field weakening, increase the amperage, you know, since I have this extra battery running now on the bottom, two batteries, see the differences. Now, when I got this, I did not realize these newer Sabatons are much bigger. As you can see, it's about an inch and a half longer, same width and height, but about an inch and a half longer. And I got it, I was like, crap, man, this thing ain't gonna fit in here because this thing was a beast to get into the bike by itself. Um, so what I had to do is I had to take the Dremel tool and I literally cut all up and around the frame, this inner lip here. I cut it all up and around, down. Um, and this battery is actually out. It's just sitting on this lip so I could get to the, the cable in the back. Um, but yeah, I had to cut it. Now with doing all that cutting on both sides, I am actually able to get the bigger Sabaton inside the frame, which I was like, thank God, I was so worried about that. But able to get it in, which I'm super psyched about. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Hooking up this tire, running the cable through, hooking up the controller, um, and hopefully it all works properly. I'd be interested to see what happens if I don't have this disconnect, if it'll hook up properly, if it'll work. It better, because if it, if it doesn't, I'm gonna throw this thing right through the wall, quite frankly. Um, so yeah, uh, it's gonna be a little bit of work too. Since I have uh, different spy spaces, I might have to play a little bit with the brake disc spacing. Hopefully not too much, but uh, if I have to, I have to. Um, and I also have installed these torque arms, which I'll show you a little bit of, a little later. I drilled out the holes for them, so we're gonna install those for a little extra power since I am running the 5T motor. All right, let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna start by, you disconnect your power, make sure you always disconnect your power first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, I'm gonna have to run this cable through, get it up in so I can make my connections. You got your main, uh, you got an extra hall sensor here and you have your main hall sensor. I'm gonna use this one, uh, which works with the connection on the new one. These are different types of connectors. The old one has this one, so if you're doing an old one to a new motor, you gotta keep that in mind. You may have a different connector, but these thankfully match since they're from the same seller. So that's what I'm gonna start to do first. All right guys, so I'm already running into my first problem. The hole is not big enough for these connectors to go up through. So Dremel saw, I gotta cut a bigger hole. Just one step I forgot to mention before you do all that, 
Um, you have to put your new brake. I got it. Well, I got a new brake disc, so I am going to put that on before I install my wheel. I got a couple spacers here. These are uh, each one millimeter spacers, and so I'll be two millimeters total spacing. Yeah, so I try not to, I don't want to touch this disc too much with my hands because I don't want to get oil on, on the... Alright, so you want to make sure it's going the correct direction. This is, goes this way, so this is the way I'll be putting it on. This is a, um, a, a SRAM centerline disc. I have a 220 millimeter on the front, and I, I like that one. So I figured I'd just stick with a two or three on the back. Um, that's what the thing was already set up for. Um, you know, not a big deal. I, mean, this, I didn't really feel the need to go to uh, 223 on the back, so it's fine. I like to start them all before I crank them all down first. That way, if you have any uneven spots, it doesn't get all wonky on you. Put your drill setting down low because you don't want to over crank these things and strip them. Very important. These are star bits. Just do them easily, one at a time. All right, now to mount the wheel up. So a little update on the progress. Uh, it's been taking a while, I've done a lot of work. I cut that hole out, as you can see, I got it in. I got the tire on, I mounted the uh, new brake rotor. And like a total idiot, of course I can never do anything, you know, a, a, a fix up without having one mistake. The washer spacer, which was supposed to be on there, I forgot to put it on there. And it was so much work getting this wire up in there, getting it all connected up. I actually needed the help of my son. He had, I had to help lift the battery, he had to pull the wires up. There's no way I'm redoing it all over again. It's just too much. I'm, I'm, I'm too far in. So I was like, you know, it's just gonna be the old zip tie method again where you, you, know, you put a zip tie around your cord to keep it away from your, your um, bolts right there so it doesn't get cut. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm working on spacing, um, getting this wheel properly spaced. I got too much space on this side and it's touching on this side. So I'm finagling with the washers, how many washers I need, all along with the torque arms, installing the torque arms here. Um, one thing I've learned by trial and error, you kind of have to torque these down, attach them with the bolt before you screw in this because if you don't, it's going to turn them and it's going to try to really put a lot of pressure in that bolt, possibly bend your bolt and you don't want that. So crank those down first if you do that. And I hope, I really hope everything's okay with that controller because it was a giant pain in the butt getting it in there because those wires were just so tight. And they don't bend, they stick way out because of the way the connectors are formed. Uh, well, I mean, so I'm gonna keep going. I'll keep you updated on the progress and uh, check back in a bit. Day three. Hey guys, so today is Tuesday. First part of that video was done on um, Sunday. So uh, a few days here, it's been taken to this project a little longer than I thought it would. I ran into a complication. Left off, we were able to get the wheel hooked up. Um, was able to get the hole cut out, put the brake disc on, everything. Um, ran the cable up in. It was really tricky getting that cable in and getting it wired to the controller. Those wires are really tight. And with that really big controller, there wasn't a lot of space to deal with. Um, so I had to run my cable in a little differently than it was before. I had to run it kind of on the outside. I'll show you a close up of that. And. Um, I had to do that because I didn't have enough slack to wire it in. So as you can see, I've covered it in some protective automotive cable. I got that from Pet Boys. You can get it from Lowe's, Home Depot. It's probably cheaper at Lowe's. Uh, but that stuff's actually really protective of the cable. I've had a few times where I've hit the cable and um, maybe nicked it. So that stuff will give me some extra protection going right up on into the case. Put a gasket in there. I covered that with some tape just for now, as you can see in there. Um, but it's pretty, it's pretty solid. I've zip tied it all the way up. It's, it's tight. Um, and I have about an eighth inch of clearance on either side of the knobbies on the tire, which is pretty good. It's perfect. Um, it took a lot of work, I'll be honest with you. It took a lot of work on Sunday trying to get that tire in the right position. 
Um, I have uh, a few washers on either side. I had to take some off, put some on, keep messing with it to get it in that right spot. Once I got it in the right spot, I had mounted my brake on and I realized that my brake was touching the motor. Ah. I had the spacers in, as you can see. I installed spacers. Apparently the spacers weren't thick enough. I should have added another one from the other motor over here. Um, you know, that would have given me more clearance, but once it's all together and that wire's wired in, there's no taking off. It's just too much work. Um, so I got it in there and uh, the controller. Huh. It's, an <laughs> it's another friggin' story. Got the controller all wired up, turn it on and realized that my display was had a communication error 30H. Looked online, tried to research it. The bike actually still works. The motor still turns, um, but I just can't really see my speed. That's my only problem. So uh, basically this controller was supposed to be set up for this UKC1 display. I can still see my voltage and my battery power, which is great. That's really all I'm really concerned about, knowing what my battery power is. Uh, but I just can't see what speed I am. So I have that magnetic mount. I'm just gonna use a phone, use a speed app, and I'll see my speed on that. But the other actual benefit of that is that I never really thought of before. I have, I'm just gonna leave my Bluetooth dongle connected permanently in there. And that way I can connect to it anytime I want and I can actually monitor the motor temperature in real time through the Bluetooth app, which is kind of cool. Um, I haven't actually tried it yet while I was riding, but I'm gonna do that. So the controller, I was able to get it in. It was a tight squeeze of those wires. I had to really uh, push and push and push, but I got it in there, um, got it mounted up. It's nice and tight. I wedged some foam underneath the controller and between the battery and it's, it, and I have these really big zip ties that I use to clamp it down. So it's, it's tight, it's not going anywhere. You wanna make sure it doesn't move. And I also put some foam in there around my cables to keep everything from rattling and shaking. So just to give you guys an idea, this is the old tire and this is how it looks compared to the new one. Quite a bit thicker, quite a bit bigger knob. So I'm expecting good performance out of it. This is, a lot of questions you get to ask about tire sizes. This is an 8,119 tire, okay? Um, so that means the width, which is an 80 millimeters, the tire is 100% of that 80 millimeters in height, okay? This is a 9100, so this tire is 90 millimeters wide, 100% of that 90. Um, but as this is a special for a rear tire, um, even this, this is an 18 inch tire and this is a 19 inch tire, this is actually still taller and higher with that out, you know, wider outer diameter than this 19 inch tire because rear tires are actually made with a uh, thicker sidewall. I don't know what this tire is from China, I don't know what it is, but if it was specifically made as a rear tire, not probably, I don't know, maybe. But this one has a thicker sidewall, so this is gonna give me more padding. This is the 3.5T motor, this is the 5T. Um, so I'm really excited to see what the differences are gonna be. So one other thing I want to tell you about is I actually took the screws out of these dropouts and replaced them with higher quality Allen bolts. I wanted to make sure that this has gonna have the least a chance to open up with us higher torque 5T motor. I also have these torque arms that were installed here, so that gives me extra protection. Um, so man, this thing's tight and locked up and um, should be pretty good. Some of you also had a question about how do I secure this big old battery in this case um, without it moving around shifting. Sometimes when I'd be off road, riding, hitting a big bump, no matter how tight you had stuff wedged in here, it would still move. It had to be tight. So what I did is I went to Lowe's um, and I got these, um, they're like non-slip non sticky pads. And I got two here, I have three on that side, stuck them on here. So what happens is when I put my side panels on, these stick out further than the frame. You push this in, you screw it in here, and this is tight on both sides, wedged in, and it doesn't move, doesn't go anywhere. Um, I also have some foam wedged under the controller 
keep make sure the controller is nice and tight up top so that that doesn't move around. Um, sometimes if this controller is loose, some of your wires can shake and you could lose power and the bike will shut off. So you want to make sure that does not happen. Um, just be careful when you're pushing all your cables in here. You don't want to pinch any cables, scrape any cables, cut any cables open. That's very important. Um, and I have my wires here. Second battery on the bottom. And I'm just going to put these side panels on. I'm going to be ready to try this thing out. So guys, I took it out, just went on a ride, and I'm not happy. The performance was just about exactly the same with this motor as it was with the 3.5T motor. I suspect the seller sent me a 3.5T motor telling me it was a 5T motor when it really wasn't because it actually has the same exact performance. Um, the only big huge negative is in difference in performance. This new big unlock control I put in, when I hit the throttle and I give it a hard throttle, the battery in the screen, the percentage goes down to like 10%, 0%, and it goes into the red, and my volts drop down to like 60, down to like nothing. Um, which I don't really like that either. So that tells me maybe I'm doing serious damage to my battery to this controller. <sighs> it's a lot of work, guys. A lot of work for um, getting screwed over. Um, the only positive I will say is that this tire, this big fat, it made the ride probably twice as soft. The bumps were way less. It sucks up the bumps incredibly it's like it, the, 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 the ride was so much less bumpy with this big fat 18 inch tire at, at a real low tire pressure um it's loud it's loud as heck when you're on the road it's like it makes super loud noise it sounds like i'm riding uh, with a, with an engine but um i got the same top speed i got i hit 58 miles per hour um and that's what also ticks me off so like or cues me off that this is probably a 3.5T motor because I don't think there's any way possible a 5T motor is going to hit 58 miles per hour with a heavier tire. I think I got screwed, basically. And that's what you deal with when you're dealing with these sellers on Alibaba. There's no consequences. You can't really send it back. They don't accept returns. And since I did it through PayPal, I can't even, I can't even give them a bad review. They get off scot-free. So I think I'm going to switch the other controller back, put my old 7200 back in. So at least maybe I can get my display back and I can see if that voltage and battery drop situation happens again, because that, that sucks. I don't want to be destroying my battery with this thing. I would, since they have different connectors, I'm probably going to have to do some surgery and some wiring and put the other connector, just cut them off and then reattach them with some other type of connection because this wire, this motor has a different type of connector than that motor does. More work, great. <laughs> um, but hey, hopefully maybe you guys have learned something through all this. Um, I don't know, buy American. <laughs> That's the moral of my story, buy American. So when I switch that back, I'll give you an update on if I see any differences in what the display is doing. And uh, I guess that's it. I'll catch you next time.